Well, shooters and reloaders out there, Fortune Cookie 45LC coming to you from the hot lead zone. And we got to talk about the subject of bullet jump a little bit more because the controversy was raging since the 1970s and it hasn't gone away. So let's see if we can give you a little more information on that to really settle that down. And I don't think you've ever heard the subject of bullet jump mentioned in just this way. What you're looking at is my Bill Davis custom PPC revolver, which has never shot anything else but wad cutter ammunition. And back in my PPC days, I actually bought 6,000 Winchester 38 cases that were purchased in 1,000 uh, round loaded ammo boxes with Winchester brass. And uh, so I shot all that ammo up and, and has been reloading that uh, 38 brass from Winchester ever since. Well, Bill Davis made this gun off of a Smith & Wesson Model 65. And the Model 65 was a stainless steel 357 Magnum revolver that didn't have any adjustable sights on it. And uh, was made back uh, between the years of uh, 2004 and all the way back to 1972. This gun was purchased back in the late 1970s and you'll notice that it has, of that era, it has the pin barrel, it has recessed chambers, and it has the hammer mounted firing pin. So you see, it is a 357 Magnum revolver. Just like that. So why did Bill Davis make this gun off a of 357 Magnum? Because after all, when you put a 38 wad cutter in there, you get a lot of bullet jump. Now wouldn't that be bad for accuracy? Now would Bill Davis make a gun that wasn't accurate? No, this gun was guaranteed to shoot one and a half inches at 50 yards off of a rest. So the bullet jump is that significant. Now you're gonna hear even today that someone's gonna say, well, that bullet when it comes out of the case and it's fired, it's gonna rattle around in there and then when it's going to hit the forcing cone, it'll be cockeyed and you can't get any good accuracy out of that. You will hear that. Because we've seen it in writing, we've seen it just told to, to people. You all know that there is a constriction in there that's just past the 357 Magnum length. And that constriction leads to what's called the cylinder throat. Which is a diameter of this opening right here. If you take a wad cutter bullet and you drop it into the chamber, you'll see that the bullet stops in there. There it is right there. It stops. That's because it's hit the cylinder throat that's on the other end of the cylinder throat. And because the bullet is 0.001 bigger than the cylinder throat, it stops. Now, if you measure the distance with the back end of this caliper to that bullet, you will get the distance of the cylinder throat, how, how long it is in the cylinder. Now, you can do that yourself, but to save you the trouble, I went ahead and measured that distance, and it is 0.292. So that means that the cylinder throat is actually that far in So then when the 38 round is in there, notice that the 38 wad cutter bullet only moves a little distance. And then it engages the cylinder throat. And because the bullet is 0.001 bigger than the cylinder throat, it seals off in there. And that happens while the rest of the wad cutter is still in the case. Now then, as the powder gases push the bullet into the cylinder throat, the whole cylinder throat, the wad cutter goes in there square because the cylinder throat squares it up. And then as the bullet emerges from the cylinder throat, then it goes into the forcing cone, but it goes in square. So where did this idea of the, of the bullet rattling around in there come from? You got me. Plus when this 38 special, by the way, I apologize that 
wad cutters sticking out, but this all applies if that wad cutter is even with that case mouth. But anyway, when this 38 special round cooks off, the distance traveled and the time it takes for that bullet to go, go in there and engage the cylinder throw from the other end, that time is like milliseconds. It may even only be a, a couple of milliseconds, but it takes time to rattle. You don't have time for the bullet to rattle. Well, there certainly are a lot of features of revolvers that are necessary for accuracy, such as the lockup of the cylinder and crane, the lockup of the timing of the cylinders in alignment with the barrel, the quality of the forcing cone, the quality of the barrel. This happens to be a custom barrel. I think it's a heart. It's got 10 grooves in there. But anyway, so it's the quality of the barrel and, and whether there are any constrictions in the barrel that would ruin accuracy. And some barrels actually have a little taper, gets a little narrower toward the, toward the muzzle, this kind of thing. The accuracy of the ammo, but the bullet jump is not one of those. If you, if you read about what makes an accurate revolver, they don't talk about bullet jump. So shooters and reloaders, hopefully these uh, videos on bullet jump have laid this issue to rest. But if you run into someone who really believes that bullet jump ruins accuracy, then it doesn't really do any good to argue with that person. But uh, for your edification, uh, hopefully this has cleared things up. Bye for now.